well, sir. This is uh, an interesting premiere. He's getting shouted at still? Yes, no, absolutely. No, it's, it's uh, reassuring. Absolutely. <laughs> it will never end. Well, we hope not. Absolutely. No, it's, it, you know, it's wonderful to have so many people come out and support it. Like, it's, it's I, I, honestly, I really didn't expect it. It's fantastic. I'm curious what you think the audience crossover will be. People who are fans of you and fans of the Potter franchise seeing this, what their experience you suspect? Uh, to be honest, like, they stuck with me through Equus, so this isn't going to put them off. Like, this is a, this is a much more, co the Equus was a much more confrontational thing, I think, as a fan. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think there'll be a huge crossover. Generally speaking, the Harry Potter fans are, you know, very literate, very, you know, open. I think Harry Potter in itself teaches people to be open-minded and, 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 and search out other things that they're interested in. So hopefully this will be one of those things. And do you expect, I mean, you're obviously Potter, this, they're adaptations of books. Yes. Do you, I mean, are you looking out to find something that's very original for the next project? Um, I'm ne the next project I'm doing is, is an original script. Um, it's, it's based on a true story, but, you know, our, our, our director, writer has, you know, had a, had a few flourishes in there. Um, but it's uh, it's about Alan Ginsberg, it's about, uh, the, I play Alan Ginsberg, and it's about a murder that sort of was the catalyst to forming the Beat Generation. I think I spoke to you briefly at the Potter premiere. Oh, gosh. But, yes. I don't know what happened there. I'm being a sort of a late addition to the Potter. Potter tribe and I went and I went this is beyond compare actually the Potter thing was amazing because I knew it you know I knew how big it was but when I saw those people there uh, what it meant to them when I heard them talk about real people who read the books how they'd grown up with those books for all these years it was much deeper psychologically than I had imagined it's just occurred to me actually that you've spent it's your last three major film roles have been adaptations of dearly loved books haven't they because Tinker Taylor and, oh, right. and uh, Hey, Potter, I don't remember. Yeah, 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 it's strange. <laughs> the look of surprise on your face, I'll take it that wasn't a deliberate decision. No, that's sort of become fresh news to me. But uh, like when you read uh, the screenplay, if you're lucky enough to you know, be attend these things, um, you read them as they are. You know, you don't know oh, what it's like. And uh, all three of them were terrific. Well, the Potter speaks for itself. But uh, the script for Tinker Taylor was extraordinary. Uh, uh, the levels on which it played on. And then this script with Jane Goldman, the woman in black, was also uh, the descriptive force that she had. Not a lot of dialogue, very spare, but the descriptive force of uh, atmosphere and landscape and uh, what's all hovering around memories. I find very strong, very strong. And obviously, um, Tinker Taylor, I believe today, has been nominated definitely for Oscar for Best Picture, and I believe... Not, no, it didn't get nominated for Best Picture. It, it was nominated for... Right, okay. Best actor. Best actor, uh, which we're all thrilled about. For Gary but, Oldman. And but and with the BAFTAs, it's you're pretty much all of the uh, film is it's in all categories. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is. I mean, I, I mean, there's no counting for taste, but when I went to see it on my own, I'm just doing theatre in Dublin. I wasn't around the opening and stuff, and I went to see it on a Sunday afternoon, and uh, it sort of blew me away in its uh, style, its content, the, the rhythm of it. It was just a great, great journey to go on, even though I sort of knew it. But when you actually see the finished result that Thomas Alfredson had made, it was uh, fantastic. And this is obviously the second film you've been with Daniel in recently. Yeah. So Look, we can't leave each other alone now. Are you the new Rupert Grint? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, Daniel, what are you doing next? Can I come? No. Um, no, it was actually it was coincidental, you know, we got for jobs and I, I was very thrilled to be asked into Harry Potter just at the end, but then coincidentally Jason, uh, sorry, James, James Watkins, the director, had seen some work I'd done and thought I might be a good older balance to the young... Arthur Kipps, who Daniels plays, just somebody who's kind of grounded, but also slightly carries a bit of grief because of my long face, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and what's next for you? I mean, it's, the, you've, it's a fantastic moustache, by the way, Kieran. Is that part of a role? Or? This is, I'm um, working just over that building down at the National Theatre at the minute, at uh, doing uh, one of the great Irish plays, one of the great European plays of the last century called Juno and the Paycock, and uh, we're playing to the end of February. So we, I've been doing it for about five months between Dublin and London, and uh, hence this minor affectation, 1920s.